In this video, I'm gonna go over the basics of lift printing and how to make your very first lift print. Now today we are going to be lift printing on the Fomatone Multigrade Classic. This is a glossy fiber-based paper. It is a very beautiful paper for all around printing and it does lift very well. I recommend if you have never lift printed before, this is probably the easiest to learn. So that's what we're gonna be using today. And then we are going to be using the Morsh uh, Special Edition Lith with Additive D, which is a bromide. So that's what we're gonna be developing the paper in. So real quick, what a lift print is. You basically are using traditional um, negatives in a dark room and you're printing on papers that will lift and you're giving it more exposure and then underdeveloping it in a highly diluted lithographic developer um, such as this, the Morsh um, Lift Developer. Now, certain papers will lift and certain papers won't. In particular, ones that have developers in the emulsion will not. So a lot of modern papers just will not have the reaction that you need, which is called infectious development, to get the lift process to look the way you want it to. So the two papers currently on the market that I would recommend for beginners are the Ilford Multigrade Warm Tone and the Fomatone Multigrade Papers. Both are pretty um, straightforward and you won't have a lot of problems with them, but they do react differently. So there, there are some differences. And when it comes to the paper too, if, if you're just starting, if this is the first time doing it, I really recommend starting small. Um, it, it might take a little bit to get the hang of this, but I think once you do, you'll find it very rewarding. So I'm gonna show you today, I'm just gonna print small. It's a square negative, but I'm gonna print it on five by seven paper. And what I personally like to do is buy boxes of eight by 10 and then just trim it down to five by seven. That way, once I have something I like um, on the smaller paper, I can easily scale it up to a bigger size on the eight by 10 and I have both there. And it's been very uh, economical for me. And I think it will help you know, save money in the long run. If you just start small and then you can scale up. Um, I did make a video recently on how to just scale up your prints and that would apply to lift prints the same as it would traditional prints. Now, when it comes to uh, lift developers on the market, I believe this one from Rolle is still available. Um, I have the Rista Lift here, which I still, it's a, it's an A and B, there's two bottles of this as well, is still available. And, but I've kind of switched over to the Morsh. And the main reason is because it's formaldehyde free. And I do get really good results with it as well. But if you're in a dark room that doesn't have a lot of good ventilation, I would recommend definitely using the Morsh um, and then trying to get some ventilation in there as well especially if you're gonna use it the way I do, which I like to use it hot. And the main reason I like to use it hot is it, it speeds up the process and I usually don't have a ton of time. So you don't have to use it hot, but everything's just gonna take longer. So anyway, I would highly recommend you start with um, the Morsh Lith and you can start with the Easy Lith or the Special Edition comes with a few additives. Um, it comes with some bromide and I think it comes with some sulfite as well those definitely come in handy and I will be using um, the bromide for sure, but you don't necessarily need it. But if I was gonna go the Marsh route, I would just get the special edition or I would get the easy lift and then buy the little um, concentrate of the bromide. So those are like the kind of the lift um, developer options, but let's just jump right in and I'm gonna show you exactly how I would approach this as a first time, just got my I just got my developer and I got my paper and I want to start um, making a lift print. So the first thing you're going to do is make a test strip of the negative that you want to print. So get it all focused up at the size, you know, the size that you want to print it at and do a, a, a series of like three, six, nine, twelve, 12 or two, four, six, eight or wherever you think is gonna get you in the ballpark for a good exposure. And what you're looking for is a good 
print time for the highlights and the midtones. You're gonna disregard the shadow and the contrast at this point. Don't worry about that. And you're gonna develop that in whatever normal print developer you would normally use. So just mix up a little bit of that. You can use a small tray if you need to, eight by 10, five by seven. So you're not wasting a ton of developer because you're not really gonna use a lot of it. So just mix up a little developer. Find a good exposure and print time for the highlights and midtones. Once you have that dialed in, then I would mix up your lift developer. Hey, if you are getting value from this video, please hit the subscribe button down below so that you can get updated on all future content when it comes out and more darkroom tips and tricks. Yeah, and I almost forgot one other piece of kit you're gonna wanna make sure you have before you uh, start doing this is some type of flashlight with a red filter on the end. This is um, gonna allow you to inspect the print and watch for the best snatch point. And this one's just a mag light. And I put a piece of diffusion and some ruby red gel here. So it's pretty easy to make one of these. So just find yourself a light and then figure out a way to cover the end with like red um, lithographic tape. You could put tape on there. Um, this was just a gel. So just make sure it's red and it's not gonna fog your paper. So you need a torch. Ah. All right, now that we have the test print done, it is time to mix up the lift developer. It looks like from that test strip, the highlights and shit and uh, midtones look good right about six seconds. So I'm gonna mix the developer and then I think I'm gonna give a first print uh, two stops more exposure. That is the recommended. So we're gonna see where that sets us. So that is from six to 12, we're gonna give it a 24 second exposure. So two stops overexposed. So let's mix this developer up. I'm gonna mix this as per the Marsh instructions on here too. So for him, he says example, Fomatone paper, 50A, 50B, 25 to 50 milliliter D, diluted one to four. And when he says D, that is this little additive here. And that comes with the special edition kit. But what this is, is basically bromide and it restrains development and it kicks in the infectious development in the shadows more. So it kind of holds everything back Think of it as kind of like an inertia. It adds, it adds like a restraint across the whole thing and then the blacks will break through first and the highlights still get kind of held back and that's what you can kind of uh, adjust the contrast in that regard. But your main contrast controls are going to be with either more exposure or less exposure. And I'll get into that in a minute. I'm going to use hot developer. So I'm going to run my tap at over 100 degrees. I like to keep it about 100 degrees. And I have a, a tray warmer that's set up there. And I did make a video on that if you want to check that out. Um, but I like to keep it hot, mostly because it just takes way less time to do this. Um, I really generally don't have a ton of time to come in here and lift print. So that's why I use it hot. Uh, you don't have to, but I find it I find it, I don't know, I just enjoy it a little bit better. So here we go. We're going to mix 50A, 50A, run a little hot water. A little water in there. And this is the B. Later. And now the additive D, this has to be diluted first, one to four. So I do that in these little, I don't know, you can use anything, but this was just mixed uh, not that long ago. And you mix it one to four. So I put 20 milliliters of this to 100 um, and then filled it up to 100 liters. And this is the working solution. So we're gonna use 25 milliliters of the bromide restrainer. And this is about where I'd recommend as a starting point with the Fomatone. And well, we'll just see 
We'll see what we end up getting. So there's that. Just mix it up good. All right, so for the first print, we've settled on 24 seconds. So as a first print, I'm thinking it looks pretty good. It's uh, not exactly what I had envisioned, but this is two stops over what the exposure for the normal print was supposed to be. Now from here, if I want to make this more contrasty, I will give it less exposure. If I want less contrast, I would give it more exposure. But this is a really good starting point. So what I think I'm going to do is something that's called ripen the developer and I'm going to add a little bit more bromide to the developer um, by putting some photo paper through it. So to get more bromide into this developer right now you have a couple options. So if you had old brown from a previous session which is just used developer that you kept you could put some old brown in that's going to add bromide. Alternatively, you could just keep printing just like this. But what this is called, it's called ripening the developer. And the more prints you put through the developer, the more kind of exhausted and the more bromide builds up. And the bromide acts as a restrainer for the highlights and it, it starts, it holds back development and then infectious development starts in the shadows and that's where the clumping and it kind of starts exploding. And that's where you get that split. Another thing you could do is just add more of the D, but I would be careful not to add too much too quick. It's, it's best to kind of watch it build up, but you could always add more of additive D if you wanted to. But what I'm gonna do is, again, this is called ripening the developer. This is a piece of, oh my goodness. I had a box, I think it was 50 sheets of Agfa Portriga Rapid, and it worked really, really well, and then somehow some way the it's in a paper safe not in a wrapper because this stuff is so old it came in like paper so it was all torn up but anyway this stuff got exposed so what i'm going to do is just expose the paper to full light and then i'm going to drop it in the developer and that's going to release a ton of bromide into the developer and again that's called ripening the developer but what the bromide is going to do it's going to kind of hold back the highlights and everything and create a little bit more of a lift effect. And that's what I'm going for. I want a little bit more of a split tone going on. So I'm gonna give it less exposure and through ripening the developer, a little bit more bromide in the developer. So I'm thinking I'll probably try about 18 seconds. All right, so we're gonna go from 24 to 18 seconds. And that is just kind of a, a educated guess because I want to increase the contrast. So to do that, we need to lower the light on the paper. All right, here we go.
And now what I'm looking for is because we don't want to let, if we just let this keep developing, it will just turn really, really dark and very, very contrasty. So I am looking for a specific point in the blacks that when the blacks hit a certain level, I'm going to grab it and throw it in the stop bath to halt development. And what I'm looking at in this particular picture is her eyes and some of the spots in her hair. So when those hit black, that's when I'm stopping development. And that is how you can stay consistent from print to print. Uh, let me turn off my enlarger again. But that is what's called the snatch point. So you need to keep an eye on that and that's why you want to have something like this torch. So you can see it's faintly coming up now and I'm just keeping an eye on her eyes and the blacks in her hair. And when those go black, I'm going to grab it a little bit further. A little more. A little more. But you can see how the, the blacks are starting to explode. So I'm waiting for her lashes to go. I want her eyes to be filled in with black and right there. Because if you go too far, the blacks will start blocking up. So that is the second print. And I am very happy with that. That is exactly, I wanted to keep that high key vibe and not go too dark with it. So this ended up being what a stop and a half. Is that right? Yeah, six seconds, 12 to 18. So about a stop and a half over what we determined was the proper exposure. And I really like how that looks. Now lith prints dry down kind of crazy. So this could change tomorrow, but as of now, I love how it looks. All right, so mission accomplished. My dark room is trashed. I've got tripods and God knows what and paper and it's a mess. So I know it was a good night. And so just in two prints, we were able to get to one that I'm very happy with and one that kind of uh, fits the vision I had for the lift print of this high key portrait. One thing to note is that instead of using the paper or the additives, a lot of times I have old brown developer. So when you're done with this print, your first printing session, make sure you take your developer and pour it in a bottle. In fact, This is actually my Marsh Old Brown. So I will top this off with that. And then I either add some of this to my new developer on my next session, or I just add the developer right to this. So you can experiment with that too. I definitely think using the Foma paper to start is a really good idea if you want to get into this. And I really love the Marsh developer, either the Marsh Easy Lift or the Marsh Special Edition. I would just go for the special edition because it's going to give you that uh, restrainer bromide additive, which really kind of kicks it in. So now from here, I can scale this up because the developer is ready to go. So if I want to uh, raise it, you know, raise this up and print an eight by 10 or 11 by 14, like I said, I did make a video on that on how to scale your prints up. And that's going to work the same way with the lift prints. So I could go ahead and do that. Now, if you do try lift printing, don't say I didn't warn you. It's very addicting. We'll see you in the next video.